Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. This week, let's talk about what's been happening this week. So, first off, if you've been doing all of this with me, if you've been following along with this process, then I want to give you a huge congratulations. You are one week into your methylfolate start. Now, this could mean that you started and had symptoms of too high a dose and so stopped, and that's okay too. This is all a process of learning more about your body and how it reacts. So let's talk about some of the different scenarios that might have come up for you this week, and also what to expect over the next few weeks. There are actually four possibilities, as far as I know, for your methylfolate start. So chances are you've hit one of these scenarios. If, by random chance, you hit a different scenario, reach out to me, amy at tohealthwiththat.com, because I would really love to hear about it. So scenario one, you hit a deal breaker, right? In this first situation, you started methylfolate and hit a deal breaker right out of the gate. So if you'll remember from last week, we talked about it a little bit. There's two hard stops in this game. One is that you have symptoms already of too high a dose. Again, it feels like wound up energy, anxiety, panic, restlessness, intrusive thoughts. All of the uncomfortable upper type feelings. Hitting this kind of wall doesn't mean you'll never be able to take methylfolate, but it does mean we need to stop for now. We'll talk about options for this scenario in just a couple of weeks. For right now, hang tight, keep taking your B vitamins, and getting as much natural folate as you can tolerate in your diet. The other scenario is that you fall into a pit of despair, an absolute emotional black hole of depression. This one is another hard stop, and it probably means that you won't be able to take methylfolate because your serotonin is perilously low. We talked about this a tiny bit last week, but also in Season 1, Episode 17. And that's a great place to brush up on the whole CERT transporter and serotonin issue. We'll talk about it in more detail later on this season as well. But for now, stop the 5-L-methyltetrahydrofolate and try folinic acid plus something that will help to boost your serotonin instead. With serotonin issues, it's best to work with a doctor or practitioner because medications for low serotonin don't mix well with natural supplements for low serotonin. So the second scenario that you might have hit is that you felt a little strange for a few days, but it's going okay. This is great news. This is the essence of the successful 5-LMTHF start. The first few days can feel a bit abnormal, just weird, right? Your brain feels different, your body feels a little different, but it's not bad, it's just different. But if you're able to keep taking 5-LMTHF without any kind of major fallout, you're doing great. Stick to this dose, keep symptom tracking for at least three to four weeks before you consider changing the dose or bumping it up slightly. It's okay to wait longer, too. The third scenario, you feel amazing. This is also a successful 5-LMTHF start. And I'm thrilled to hear you're doing great. It's easy in this scenario to just want to take more, but stay on this dose for at least three to four weeks because, weirdly, the dose you're taking can turn into a too high dose a couple of weeks after you start it with no warning. That's a thing that happens for us. It's inconvenient, but it's true. Plus, the too much reaction gets worse if it's way too much than if it's just a little bit too much. So, you know, we don't want to bump it up too much and then end up in the mess. The fourth scenario is that you felt amazing, or maybe a little weird, and then hit the too much feeling after, say, four days, five days, a week, whatever. Don't worry. This is totally part of the journey. This means the dose is pretty close to what you need, but still a little bit too much. Stop for a few days to let your body calm down, keep supporting your health, keep taking your B vitamins, keep eating your natural folate, keep doing all of the other things you're doing. If you can manage to half the dose you were taking before, that's perfect. If getting down that much is hard, then you can always try something like one day on, one day off, um, or one day on, two days off, 
or something like that. Uh, Also, if you're taking a capsule form and it seemed like it was just a little bit too much, you can take powder out of that capsule and put the capsule back together. Okay, so one of these scenarios happened. Hopefully you have a little bit of an idea how to move forward. We're on the right path. Now what? Again, if you hit a deal breaker, then we've still got some work to do. Hang tight. We'll get to you guys for everyone else. You're on the path. Your feet are in the right place now. You just need to keep taking steps forward. You're on the cusp of the second phase of your MTHFR journey, which I like to call burning through the backlog. This second phase is the meat of the MTHFR work, and it involves catching up with all of the stuff your body's put into storage over the years, because it just didn't have the resources necessary to do whatever it was that was needed to do, and usually the resource it didn't have was methylfolate. The first things your body will tackle are immediate things, right? Daily tasks, healthier cell reproduction right now, decreasing homocysteine now, boosting nitric oxide, boosting glutathione, and helping to balance neurotransmitters. All of that is sort of now. Those are now functions. This is all very immediate and in the moment, and it won't change overnight, but you'll get closer to being caught up every day. After that, it's all about backlog. This is a collection of products that need to be methylated, tasks half finished, and most importantly, toxins stored where they would be the least harmful while your body was waiting on resources. This is part of why this journey can be so up and down. Unpacking toxins from storage is a task your body desperately wants to accomplish, but it can be messy and unpredictable. This is the reason why symptom tracking is so important. You're going to want to keep track, partly so that you can recognize detox days when they happen and give your body a bit of extra support. The whole burning through the backlog phase is a long period. For me, it was about three years in which symptoms kept slowly improving, right? I was always moving forward, but individual days could be up and down where detox symptoms pop up for no reason that I can perceive, right? Keep in mind, you're more likely to have more detox days popping up in the beginning of this process and shortly after making upward dosage changes because it pushes your body to do some work. As the journey continues to move forward, the detox days will become less and less frequent, which is lovely. Sure, you can still induce a toxic feeling day when you do something to fill up your bucket, but you aren't being blindsided by detox days anymore. If I sound like a crazy woman to you right now with all this backlog and bucket nonsense, might be a good idea to check out Season 1, Episode 51, which goes in depth about the bucket and backlog theory and what those mean to you. Or to me. (laughs) So keep moving forward. Try not to get discouraged. And if you do have a difficult day pop up, it's, it's actually a sign that your body's doing the work it's supposed to. Next week, we'll talk about what to watch out for in your symptom tracker that will help you to deal with the detox days. A couple of weeks after that, we'll talk about coping strategies for those days and how you can make them easier. So stay tuned. Also, I am so happy to say that Patreon is up and running. I've actually, there's posts there. <laughs> there's there's even an episode for the, the patrons only podcast. So things are moving forward. If you feel like you're getting some benefit from this show, I would so appreciate it if you would consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Thanks so much.